Hello everybody, Don KK4QAM here. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to start building a 2 meter packet bulletin board system. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi, a dedicated piece of software for a TNC, as well as Lin BPQ software for the bulletin board system. Stick around. All right, guys, uh, we have BNC'd into the Raspberry Pi desktop. This is the bare bones, updated, upgraded, complete first boot setup after it's been run. So I want to uh, install Direwolf, which is a sound card TNC interface. It's primarily used for APRS, but it will work with packet radio and I've had more luck with it than I have with uh, sound card software that works so well on Windows so I want to open a browser up and I want to go to direwolf download and it is on the github uh, version 1.6 of October 2020 is the latest so Let's try to scroll down. We want the source code tar.gz. So we click on that and it starts to download. Now that we have Direwolf downloaded, I want to open up this other tab here, which is BPQ32 Lin BPQ download links. If you Google BPQ32 software download, it'll be at a website called .cantab.net. And we want to get the latest re release version of Lin BPQ for Raspberry Pi. Select it and it starts to download as well. Now that we have our two pieces of software downloaded, I want to open up the file explorer and go to downloads. Uh, you see PyLin BPQ and Direwolf. Direwolf is a tar.gz file, which means it's a zipped file. I want to extract here. All right. Now that we have our Direwolf extracted into this folder, let's open it up and see what they have in here okay it has a bunch of dependency files and configuration settings i want to look at this readme file right here so let's get that open it tells a little bit about what it can do what it can act as let's scroll down here first you'll need to install some software development packages using different commands and uh, this is for Debian, Ubuntu, Raspbian, and Raspberry Pi OS. So I'm going to open a terminal and I will copy and paste these commands in the terminal and let them install. And then we'll pick back up after that. All right, now we have those dependencies installed. Let's scroll right on down to here where it says on any flavor of Linux, we'll CD into Direwolf, get checkout dev, make directory and CD build, CMake, make, sudo make install. I will uh, copy and paste those in the terminal window as well and pick back up afterwards. Instead of going CD Direwolf, my Direwolf folder is in Downloads, so I had to CD in Downloads first. Then I CD'd into the Direwolf-1.6 directory, and then we will pick back up on the commands.
All right, that looks like that's got that, so uh, we'll check and see if it's installed. All right, I had to do a restart on it, but if we come up to the main menu and we see other, there's Dire Wolf right there. And if we click it, cannot, cannot open default audio device, pointless continue, and then it shuts down. Well, that's because we need to set up the config file for Direwolf. To configure the Direwolf config file, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it through a terminal window, or you can, if you actually know where the file is located, you can open it up in a text editor, edit the, the config file to suit your needs, and then save it. I'm going to show you how to do it through the terminal window first. Let's make it full screen and make it so that we can see it very good. We will go sudo nano direwolf dot c o n f misspelled it. sudo nano direwolf dot c o n f and it's this is it. A lot of this is primarily used for APRS. So we're going to scroll down till we get audio devices. This device right here typically is the default device when you plug in a USB sound card device to a Raspberry Pi. So in order to make this work correctly, we're going to put the cursor on the pound sign and delete it. Now we come down. This is typically used for your APRS call sign. Like here, WB2OSZ-5, the APRS with the SSID number on it. I'm not going to change that right now. I'm just going to leave it as is. All right, this modem 1200 sets the baud rate to 1200 baud, which is what packet radio operates on. Now, your push to talk port. Since we have a sound card interface, we're going to have to uncomment this one, the push to talk dev TTY USB 0 RTS. In the past, I have found that this did not actually make the radio key. I had to come in and add DTR space RTS, and that actually let it key the radio. So let's scroll on down. You got a lot of useful information here if you want multi-channel inputs and such as that, like if you wanted to add APRS to your bulletin board system. You can do it in here. Now, the AGW port and the KISS port, those numbers are there. You should make note of this. Uh, we'll be using the KISS port, which is 8001. I think that's about it. We'll scroll to the bottom. Okay, now we'll save this by Control X, Y, and Enter. That's one way to edit the file. All right, now that we're opening in the file explorer, uh, we know that Direwolf was put in the downloads folder when we extracted it. But if you look, here's a direwolf.com file right here. Let's right click and open with text editor and see is this the one that we changed? Yes. First audio device is uncommented we'll come on down there's the no call the 1200 on the modem the ports and here we go with our push to talk port right there so that's two ways you can edit the configuration file for direwolf all right everybody that's it for today's video stay tuned for the next one where we'll get the lin bpq software configured and operational 73